Minister, you have four minutes. Gormag Gautlaska here, Minister, I want to welcome you into the House this morning. I also want to acknowledge the phone call I got last night from Minister Rabbit's office to say that she was unfortunately delayed and had a prior commitment today. Minister, there's a trend this morning in some of the commencement matters here because this is the third time that I've brought up uh, this particular issue in relation to assessment of needs um, because it continues to be a daily, an almost daily issue for the office, my office and indeed for people who ring me rightly in despair. In a, in a recent debate I had with Minister Rabbit in this house just a number of months ago, um, the area where I lived in, I described the waiting list, uh, the figures that I had received as something like 2,000 families. The Minister corrected me on that particular day and said that the figure was more like 2,665 families, rather than the figure that I had given and the figure that was in the official report that she was about to read out, which stated that there were 1,320 families waiting on uh, an assessment of need. She described it that day, Minister, as Groundhog Day. Uh, she also went on to say that this is as bad as it gets, gets, and she said, to be honest, the HSE has not kept pace with the growth in population in the census return, uh, and that's what she stated on that day. What I want to concentrate on today, Minister, is uh, one particular family who I've dealt with for the last number of years, uh, and that is John and uh, Yvonne Cranny and their son Parig. Their son had an assessment of need in 2012 when he was seven years of age. Park has struggled over the years and his family have sought the best for him by following up with initial needs to try and get an updated assessment for their son uh, given his struggles. The family received a letter from the appeals office in November 2021 after years of calls and no answer stating that his review had commenced and he would be offered a preliminary team assessment given the length of time involved since the last one, and most importantly, and for Parig, the changes in his presentations. Unfortunately, in September 2020, in a reply that I received upon behalf of the family, stating that this young man was highlighted as requiring a review in August 2020, a plan was in place in late 2021 to review Z's case using the PTA assessment, but as you know, Minister, this method had been invalidated. The team, now, the team stated that day that they had no alternative for this young man, and his case will be highlighted as one of a number of past AONs. I followed up with Minister Rabbit in November of 2022, and I got the same reply as I just read out, that there was no alternative pathway or formal allocation to review an assessment of need case. You will be familiar, Minister, that last year in a debate in the Dáil on autism and indeed pathways for assessment of needs, the Minister, in an unusual intervention, said she was going to change all of this and that we would have uh, changes in relation to assessment of need with the setting up of six uh, uh, units for assessment of need. It gave hope to the family Families like the Craney family in a Thai minister roll on a number of months a number of letters that I've sent to the minister and indeed the HSE and I got an updated response which I received on the 14th of February of this year. To say the response was disappointing would be an understatement minister. It was a copy and paste of the August 2022 letter stating once again that the assessment of the youth office had no, currently no alternative pathway, no formal allocation of resources in place to carry out a clinical reassessment for ASN or for assessment of need cases. That's the same reply that I received two years prior to that for that particular family. Minister, that's one of the families that I'm just making an example of today, but I get that calls from so many families week in, week out looking for an assessment of need, looking for a reassessment of need. That child was seven years of age in 2012. It's now 2024. He hasn't had his reassessment of need. The family are crying out for him. There are more families in the line. There does not seem to be any improvement in relation to assessment of need. And when you receive a letter like there is no formal pathway, no alternative, and you have to share that with a family who are in despair, it just beggars belief, Minister, and I hope today that you're coming with some good news for the Craney family in Atai and for all the other families that are contacting me and other public representatives in the CHO7 area. Thank you, Senator. Minister, to respond. Yeah, Garmagot, uh, and um, Minister Rabbit asked me to, th to pass out our personal thanks to the Senator for his understanding of the situation this morning and appreciate uh, the, the time to talk last night and, uh, and obviously the, the specific needs of um, the Grainy family in Athai and absolutely uh, she has taken the, the correspondence that you provided to her office on board and, uh, and while the, the correspondence and the relevant points of the correspondence in September 22 were entirely valid at the time, the position has developed greatly in the interim. <coughs> <That's clear. coughs> Excuse me. Minister Rabbit acknowledges the challenges being faced by children and young people with disabilities and their families in relation to the assessment to need process, but remains firm in ensuring that they receive the opportunity to access health services in a timely 
manner. However, under the Disability Act of 2005, children do not require an assessment of need to access services. And presently, there are many children who are in receipt of therapy services that have not gone through uh, the AON process. Following on from the High Court ruling on the 11th of March 2022, the HSC was required to reassess children in order to meet legal requirements. While alternative guidance was developed, the HSC reverted to the pre-2020 process, and there may have been a lack of consistency across the country in the application of this interim method. It would appear that the correspondence that Senator Ward sent to the Minister referred to an individual who was awaiting um, an AON within this time frame. In July 2023, the Head of Disability Operations of the HSC approved a new and revised standard operating procedure which included the interim guidance for assessors in order to provide a clear and consistent approach to managing AONs and the process of referrals. In relation to CH07, there are currently a combined 5,133 AON applications between Stage 1 and Stage 2 outstanding. Minister Abbott and the HSC are entirely focused on driving down the waiting lists <clears throat> for assessments of needs, and this is featured strongly in the roadmap for service improvement from 2023 to 2026, with working groups implementing actions to address AON and workforce recruitment and retention. The HSC and its lead agencies are continuing to explore a range of options to address AON's waiting lists, including the allocation of a total of €16 million Euro, um, to procure private assessments for children and young people. The HSC also launched the first nationwide CDNT recruitment campaign in January 2024. Be part of our team, be part of their lives, with so far around 495 applications received. The HSC have also informed the department that the interview phase of the selection process is underway and has hoped that appointments will commence from the middle of this month onwards. Regional assessment hubs to undertake own assessments are currently in place across the country by the HSC. Minister Rabbit will continue to engage with the HSC to advance the appropriate measures in to order to ensure that every family that is seeking assessment receives one in a timely manner. It is important to acknowledge the services that are currently being delivered by the HSC and its lead agencies, where approximately 46,000 children with complex needs are receiving services and supports provided by CDNTs across the state. And just in conclusion, Laska Hirlik, Minister Rabbit will underline that she will continue to engage directly with you, Senator Wall, in relation to not just the own family that you've mentioned in the five, but other families across the H07, and particularly as they affect uh, South Kildare. Thank you, Minister. Senator Wall. Yeah, first of all, I want to thank the Minister uh, for his reply and for going through it in, in such detail. Minister, you've underlined uh, in your reply, and it's not underlined, it's been underlined, that they do not require an assessment of need. I've been here before, and every family that I deal with, the first question they're asked is for that piece of paper, for that assessment they need. So something needs to change there. We need to tell the clinicians, we need to tell everybody else that you do not require an assessment of need. And this is probably my third or fourth time to say this in the House Cahirlock. And that needs to change urgently, because that's what they have, this family have been told, the family that I've just brought up. That's what all the multiple families that I deal with is, that if you get an assessment of need, then you will get the pathways, because the pathways are not just opening up for not just the Craney family in the type, but all the other all the families I deal with. There is no Pathway. This child was seven when he got his first assessment of need. He's now a 21-year-old adult. He's had no reassessment. And as I've said, there's been a complete change in his personality and in his needs. And that's what I'm fighting for today, Minister. I appreciate that there has been uh, movement in relation to setting up the assessment of need centres around the areas, but 5,133 in CHO7 is simply not good enough. And they are, they are the people that are ringing me on a daily basis, and these are the people that are ringing other public reps right throughout CHO7. It needs to change. It needs to change urgently. And I hope you can bring that message back uh, to Minister Rabbit. Senator Minister. And I just want to underline, Senator, that the government shares your absolute concerns. Of course, I'll bring back the message. It's being heard loud and clear by Minister Rabbit and the entirety of her team. And the Minister will continue to be heavily involved in advancing the roadmap for service improvement in order to, amongst other things, improve the assessment of need process and recruitment of health and social care professionals to our disability services. In this regard, there is a dedicated focus on assessment and need in working groups that have been established within the roadmap governance structures and work will be centred on ensuring that all care sectors, primary care, disability, CAMS, work together to address issues that exist for children with disabilities in accessing uh, the support. And the Minister wishes to reaffirm her commitment and that of the HSE to ensure that each family and their child that wishes to receive an assessment has the opportunity to do so in a timely manner and driving down those numbers in CHO7 and beyond is an absolute priority.